Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. So today we want to talk about Ubiquity Unify Wi-Fi 6E. So Wi-Fi 6E extends support for 802.11ax and is really called 802.11axe, and it uses the 6 gigahertz radio spectrum and promises faster speeds and lower latencies. And after doing a little bit of research, I come to the conclusion that the faster speeds are really attained by the fact that we have more frequency range and basically less crowded frequency range in that six gigahertz radio spectrum. So I have a friend who purchased a third generation Amazon Fire TV cube and it has a Wi-Fi 6E radio in it. It was connecting via Wi-Fi 6, but not Wi-Fi 6E. The access point in use is the Unify AP-U6E-Enterprise. And interestingly, the FireCube was not connecting via the 6 gigahertz spectrum. This video is about Wi-Fi 6E connectivity with Unify access points. So a little bit of a background on this particular network. First of all, we have the default network, which is addressed at 192.168.1. Then I have a VLAN called the DMC VLAN, and it is addressed at 170.25.20. And this network is VLAN 20. And finally, we have the IoT network, which is operating at the 170.25.10 network, and it is VLAN 10. It's the IoT VLAN that we want to discuss here. So next, we want to move from networks up to Wi-Fi SSIDs. When we click on Wi-Fi SSIDs, my final solution was to create two SSIDs, one called Explorer and one called Explorer 6E. Explorer has the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz networks enabled, and it uses WPA2 as its security protocol. The SSID Explorer 6E, on the other hand, uses only the 6 gigahertz band, and it has WPA3 as its security protocol. Going back to the original Explorer network, again, we have 2.4 gigahertz radio and 5 gigahertz radio turned on but not the six gigahertz radio. And again, the reason is because we have WPA2 enabled as the security protocol. And that's because this particular SSID supports Wi-Fi 5 clients. So in coming up here, if we enable the six gigahertz band and we scroll down the screen, you can see that WPA2 WPA2 Enterprise and the combined option WPA2 and WPA3 are all grayed out and the only choices are WPA3 or WPA3 Enterprise. So if we scroll back to the top and we turn off the 6 gigahertz band and scroll back down to the bottom, we have WPA2 enabled again. You would think that with 6 gigahertz enabled that you'd be able to use the WPA2 slash WPA3 option. But as soon as you turn on 6 gigahertz, it forces you over to WPA3. And that, by the standard, is appropriate. The thing that's really not appropriate, if you think about it, is that when you have the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands enabled, you should be able to say, WPA2 slash WPA3 and that should be the required setting because it would mean that Wi-Fi 5 clients would be supported via WPA2 whereas Wi-Fi 6 clients not 6E but 6 clients require WPA3 
but instead the setting WPA2 seems to work here and Wi-Fi 6 clients are allowed to connect to the network presumably with WPA2 although we know that's not happening in the background. So the effect of creating this Explorer-6E network that only accepts connections on the 6 gigahertz uh, bandwidth means that if we go over to clients and I select the Amazon Fire TV cube you can see up here that it says 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 and down here it says the channel is number 37 it's 6 gigahertz with an 80 megahertz bandwidth so we've achieved what we wanted to do and the Fire TV cube is in fact connected via Wi-Fi 6E. So in reading a little bit more online, I did find a couple of documents which point to the fact that Wi-Fi 6 does support WPA, WPA2, and WPA3, which might explain um, Unify's uh, implementation of Wi-Fi 6. However, when you move over to 6E, as you can see, you only have WPA3 and what's called OWE, which is Opportunistic Wireless Encryption. And Opportunistic Wireless Encryption is the ability to encrypt open networks for things like uh, coffee shops and such that may not have a password um, on their connection, but still could be encrypted. And then here we have the Wi-Fi 7 uh, in this year coming um, and it still uses the uh, 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz networks but instead of just using one of them it uses all of them together and does band division and so you get quite a bit more traffic. It's a real game changer. So really you kind of wonder why they bothered to come up with Wi-Fi 6E given the huge jump from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 7. So in summary, Wi-Fi 6E is faster because of the shorter wavelength of the 6 gigahertz band. Unfortunately, the shorter wavelength travels less distance. The Wi-Fi Alliance mandates that WPA3 security is in place for Wi-Fi 6 certification. And that means that basically all Wi-Fi 6 connections, whether they're Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E, are supposed to use WPA3 by standard. So for Unify, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 devices, you can specify WPA2 or their choice for WPA2 with WPA3 combined. But once you enable the 6 GHz radio for Wi-Fi 6E, you're forced to enable WPA3 only, and WPA2 is not an option. And given that, you kind of wonder why they don't force WPA3 when you're using Wi-Fi 6, but not Wi-Fi 6E, because the Wi-Fi Alliance mandates that WPA3 security as a standard. So planning is important when you deploy Wi-Fi 6E, especially if you have any legacy clients on the same network. Anyway, thanks for coming by and watching today, and please subscribe and like to the channel, and we'll see you next time.